Hey everyone, how's it going? Cell here. The League has been out for a little over a day now and got a better grasp on it than I had initially, so I thought I'd make a video going over the mechanics and showing things around. Um, the League mechanic isn't particularly difficult to understand, but figured it would uh, be good to go over this anyways. So in these regular encounters in each area, you'll come across one of four NPCs. Uh, they've got their own little thing going on. They're looking for different types of artifacts. Um, and you'll only find that artifact that they're looking for in these encounters, so you don't have to worry about anything like that. Um, the primary objective here is to uh, maximize the amount of reward you're going to get while also trying to keep in check the difficulty of the encounter. So these remnants here are the main thing you're trying to blow up with these detonators and you'll see that each of them has something detrimental and something beneficial. Um, so something to make it a little more challenging and something to make it a little more rewarding. Uh, in this case, monsters will inflict bleeding, but the runic monsters have a 35% chance to drop an additional essence. Um, another thing to note here is these markers laying around. This is a good example. Uh, sorry about the minions in the way, but for example, these little skulls over here are each an enemy. These little tags are reward chests, of course, and these tall uh, symbolized skulls are the runic monsters. Uh, so, yeah, another thing of note is that the order does matter. The order in which you place the explosives, that is. Uh, so, for example, if I place one over here next to this runic monster, and then come over here to this, um, this initial one will not have the additional chance to drop an essence because I placed that one before the other. There is an undo button here, so let's do that. And we can go over here and place this one here first. Um, seems like the best way to go about it. And then shuffle over here. Um, they have weird commentary sometimes. And in this case, I'm trying to catch as many runic monsters in this area as I can without worrying about the um, detriment too much. I can handle all of these. Um, not dealing any lightning or fire damage, which is nice. Uh, some additional logbooks, sure. Pack size, that's pretty nice too. And yeah, we'll try to catch these remaining runic monsters. And then once you're ready, you can detonate it, and they'll go off sequentially. And we'll just handle these here. Apologies for any flashing there might be. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna die here. <laughs> okay, I'm glad I didn't die there. <laughs> Poison. A little dangerous. This patch. And you'll see the runic monsters also have a little bit of a different health bar as well. Uh, should note that my build is not complete crap. These mobs do uh, tend to be a little tanky. And unless you are running a build that can um, reliably hit everything, like I think there's some limitation with the specters here and like the, uh, the skeletons don't have a lot of area of effect. Um, unless you can reliably hit everything, it might take a minute to clear them all down because uh, they tend to be pretty dense and a bit tankier than regular mobs. So go ahead and collect these artifacts that you see here and head back into town real quick. You can also do this inside of the area, but I prefer to do it in town because I'm usually doing stuff in maps or whatever. Um, but each of the four NPCs here has their own reward scheme and style, uh, so let's go over each of those. Um, Gwenin is the gambler, and she will only show you the item base type along with an item level, which is based off of your character level. I'm 75 here, I think the last time I refreshed I was 74, and so she's showing me items of an item level a few higher than my character level. I'm not sure where this caps off, um, but there's 
possibly potential here to get some high item level items uh, through her, which is pretty nice. Um, yeah, so these items don't show you anything about them, including rarity, but they can have pretty much anything on them, um, including they can be unique, they can be linked. Uh, it seems like some items have a higher rate of uniques than others. So for example, the, um, the Covenant unique chest, I believe, is what it's called. That has a pretty high rate from what I've heard. Uh, so it's possible to like, have a character around level 50 and then refresh the shop to uh, try to get the base type and just buy that base hoping that it'll be the unique. Uh, that's probably more of an SSF thing because that unique in particular is pretty common but could apply to other uniques as well. Um, so we can go ahead and buy one of these just to show it off. In this case it was a rare, pretty crappy one. That happens a decent amount of the time, but sometimes you get good stuff. Um, I'd call this the least exciting vendor, personally. Uh, you may have also seen me pick up this earlier in the map, the scrap metal. Each of the NPCs, uh, in addition to their artifacts, has a token to uh, refresh their inventory. In this case, Gwen has an Astragali. Astragali? Looks like, I don't know what that's supposed to be, or if it's a real thing, but yeah. And that'll reroll um, filling the shop with items with an item level based on your character level. So again, I was 74, 75 when I rerolled, so uh, it's showing me item level 75 to 77 items. Close out of this. Uh, Tujin is the haggler, and he'll show a list of smaller items, so like currency, gems, uh, fossils, jewels, etc. Um, apparently he also shows maps sometimes. Haven't seen him show any maps just yet myself. Um, but when you click on an item, you can offer him an amount between one and the asking price. Um, and he will either reject it or give you a counter offer. So say 72 here, I want to haggle for these five scour rings. Are you having a go at me? He was pretty mad at that, so if I'd gone lower, he might have uh, revoked the offer. Um, if I go down even further, just a little bit here, not make him too angry, I suppose. And eventually he will um, settle. You're pushing a bit far. <laughs> okay, in this case, I've been pushing pretty far, like you said, so... Um, sometimes you'll offer him below what you might expect him to take, and he still accepts it. In this case, the original asking price was 150 something, and now he'll accept 104. Um, so yeah, I don't actually know if this will um, take away the thing. So let's see if. What if I keep offering him? Yep. So uh, be careful with the offers you make him because he might revoke the offer entirely. Um, there's probably a lot to be learned about that system, or maybe not, maybe it's just simple and don't mess with him too much, but yeah. If you're really not willing to risk it, you can just buy the item outright as well. Then Rog here. Um, this is, in my opinion, the most interesting vendor. And the way he works is he'll show you a list or a, a set of items, and you can reroll these as well. Random set of items with random mods, so pretty much just random rares. And if you go ahead and buy one, I'll go ahead and buy this ring because why not? It looks pretty crappy, but that might not matter in the slightest because items from ROG can often come out vastly different or entirely different than they went in. Um, so for example, this chest I have here, I got it from ROG. It came out uh, ignoring the links because I linked it myself. It started with, I think around 80 life, 30-something uh, lightning res, and 30-something strength. And it came out with all these stats because I was able to add a suffix, which added the fire resistance, 
and then upgrade, uh, boost by one tier or more, um, some of the affixes. So in this case, he wants to reroll suffixes. All of these are pretty bad. Man has a prefix is fine. Um, so we can go ahead and upgrade. Completely reroll those. Um, and then again, add a prefix. Go for it. Cold damage. This time doesn't really matter that much, and you can skip one. That'll make the next one cost more, but you can't skip twice in a row. So we can go ahead and upgrade this again. Um, influence type? Sure, that is possibly very impactful at this point, so I'm going to go for it. Got Warlord, which isn't great. Um, Reroll values here. There are basically a bunch of things here similar to Harvest Crafting. Um, and if that doesn't the old harvest crafting, I should say. And if that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. Um, there is a limit on how many times you can alter an item like this, so be wary of that as well. Um, it is a bit of a risk in uh, trying to bank on whether or not he can do a certain thing later down the line. But again, the only stat this thing had when we started out was the 46 mana, and now it's just completely different, and it's an item level 77 Warlord Ring. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and take that. And again, you can buy the item outright, no changes at all. If you want to, you can just buy it and then take the item immediately without making further changes to it. Last one here is Danig, and he is the meta vendor. Um, he will take Sun Artifacts and trade for any of the other artifacts. So the idea here is um, these all happen randomly, but if you get his artifacts you can sort of balance out the randomness or if you really want to focus specifically on one. So for example, um, he can also sell his base stock is everything from these grand artifacts up and he trades those at a one-to-one -one rate. So we can see here, um, price per unit, one. But if you look at these bulk ones, they um, have a 0.9 cost per unit instead of one cost per unit, for example. And of course, those are more limited, so that's why you get the discount. And if you refresh his stock, you'll see different ones of those, as well as different refresh tokens. In this case, he offered me pretty much exclusively ones for Gwenin, which is unfortunate, but yeah, so that's pretty much how that works. Alright, lastly we have Logbooks. Logbooks are a rare drop from the regular encounters and have a layout that's kind of like a blight map, but the gameplay of an expedition. So you can go around and there's a pretty sizable map for the logbooks, um, and you can go around check out each of the remnants and uh, what to do with those, and the reward chest tags are now more specific as well, so you'll see that um, some of them are currency specific, um, or some of them have uh, expedition rewards, so you can uh, focus on getting a ton of artifacts, especially when you open some remnants that have a boost to the artifact drop rate, so that's a nice way to do that as well. Um, you could also focus on uh, buffing up runic monster drops as much as possible so that you can get a bunch of those going as well later down the chain. And it's even more important to get your ordering good here because um, as you can see I have 18 things to place as I'm checking all this out. And so that's a huge potential for reward but also one for difficulty in uh, how things go here. The logbooks will show you a selection of areas that you can go, but you can only go to one of them. Um, so one of the ones I've gotten has really only had, uh, it had different choices for areas, but the artifacts I could have gotten were all the same. Um, so again, there is some choice there if that doesn't happen that you'll be able to pick whatever artifact um, you want to focus on. Yeah, apart from that, it pretty much plays 
as you would expect. Um, there's nothing sneaky about it as far as I've understood. There are um, near to the area that I'm checking out right now, uh, there's a little underground area, which I just walked past. And when I blew that open, um, and it became an enterable area with a couple of other war chests inside. So it seems like there are a little uh, small differences there. And you can see on the map it says area contains an additional underground area. Um, it's not like super expansive or anything though, so it's just basically uh, several random reward chests. And that's pretty much the gist of it. If you've gotten anything out of this video and you've watched at this point, thank you very much. Uh, if you would, please consider giving me feedback in the comments, liking the video, or subscribing. They'll help me a lot and motivate me to put out even more videos on uh, potential guides in the future. Thank you once again, and I'll see you next time. Peace.